Okay, so here would be another demonstration. You have found a part of the brain which you think is interesting, it's a limbic structure, nobody quite knows what it does, and you have now just stuck a stimulating electrode down in there. And the strategy is you're going to mildly stimulate there and you see what happens in the organism. So your first study subject is a lion, and you've stuck your stimulating electrode down in there, and you mildly stimulate this part of the brain, and what the lion does is it does this. It extends its claws. Now, your next subject is a human. So you sit down, you plunk down your stimulating electrode, and you stimulate mildly in that same part of the brain, and the human says, shit. So, what part of the brain have we just found here? We have found a part of the brain that plays a role in expressing a certain degree of irritation. And if you're a lion, you're sort of extending your claws there. You probably want to stop messing with me, because look what I'm doing right now, and look how sharp they are. With the human, another ver you got to know your species. Another example of this. So here's a part of the brain, and you're wondering what's up with this. You do the same strategy. You stick in the stimulating electrodes, and you do this to a rat. And what she does is proceed to run around her cage like crazy and take pieces of newspaper, rip them into little pieces, and stuff them in the corner. Okay, that's an interesting center of the brain. Then you do the exact same thing to a rhesus monkey, and what she does is grab any sort of cylindrical object around and hold it in her arms by her nipples. Oh, maternal behavior. First case, you got a rat making a nest. Second case, you were stimulating nursing behavior. Ah, okay, you got to translate it into what it looks like in the species. And here's one domain where that went utterly, utterly wrong. Part of the hypothalamus, which people used to think had everything to do with aggression. Because, for example, here you would take a stimulating electrode in a rat, and you put a mouse in the same cage as the rat, and you stimulate that part of the brain of the rat, and the rat leaps on the mouse trying to rip it to shreds. Now you take a human, and you stimulate that same part of the brain, and they leap up and run over to the cereal box and rip it open and start eating. What's up with that? Oh, rats eat mice. That's what the, that was not a rat being angry. That was a rat getting something to snack on. And you had to recognize the difference between what does aggression look like in that species versus what does food acquisition, and if it's a predatory species, it could pass for looking mighty aggressive and not actually be a whole generation of people thinking they were understanding the neurobiology of aggression inadvertently made this mistake and wound up studying the neurobiology of predatory behavior. So you got to know your species ethological principles. Next you got to know your individual. So here, now you've got two lions, and you stick in your stimulating electrode into the first one, that same region again, and you stimulate, and he does the same deal again. Or suppose you even stimulate it more, and he does this a bunch of times, and then he roars savagely. Meanwhile, you stimulate the same area in the second lion, and nothing happens at all. You take two baboons, you stimulate that region in the first one, and he gives this big threat yawn displaying his canines. You stimulate it in the second individual, and nothing changes in his behavior. What's the difference? Any speculations? Dominance. Yes, dominance. Here, in the second case, in the first case, you're doing it to a dominant individual, and they do their fixed action pattern for their species of expressing aggression, dominance, whatever, but you do it to some subordinate guy, and that's not part of his repertoire right now. And even though that's the part of the brain that does that behavior, it is tightly inhibited in that individual, because that's not an individual who goes around displaying his canines to a whole lot of his buddies. You have to know the individual as well. So given all of those constraints, that tells you if you're going to understand what's up with this part of the brain, the difference between fibers and nuclei, and don't get overly impressed with the notion of centers of function, but you've got to do the ethology stuff. Here, more than any time that we've seen, you've got to understand the species and the individual that you are interviewing with your electrodes.